I get a lot of comments and questions about how to use a 3D pen on my channel. I also search around to see what creations and art people are making with their 3D pens. Through all this, I've noticed a number of the same mistakes 3D pen users almost always make. And believe me, I'm totally included in this as well because I've made all these mistakes myself. My goal with this video is to point out some of these areas and then give tips on how to avoid them. The five main areas I'm gonna talk about are trying to draw completely up in the air, pushing out too much filament, sticking and not sticking to surfaces, combining different methods, and what to use at the center of 3D pen creations. Let's start off by talking about one of my biggest pet peeves with 3D pen marketing, drawing up in the air. I bet you've seen them, videos and thumbnails using a 3D pen to draw straight up into the air unaided. For example, here's my marketing clip for a new 3D pen. Introducing the world famous potent printables pen, the PPP. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound quite right. Well, what they don't show you is how long and how many attempts it takes to get that one clip or picture. I'm gonna take you behind the scenes and show you that this technique is very difficult to do and quite unreliable. The biggest problem is that you need long pauses to let the filament harden. If you don't pause for long enough, this happens. Note that I'm calling out where I've used editing to speed up these clips. Most attempts end with an outright fail like this, or they end up looking completely distorted. This will be the last one I show where I make the full pyramid shape. Here's that long pause where I also have to move the pen upward very slowly so the filament doesn't sag. Note that I'm not talking about going from point to point between two solid surfaces, which is a different technique called bridging. This is a more advanced technique that is actually achievable and very useful. So how do we avoid the marketing hype and make some cool 3D shapes and structures? Well, we do that in a number of ways. The first option is to pen flat pieces over a stencil and then assemble them into a 3D shape. There are lots of free stencils available, or you can even make your own. The second option is to pen over different materials or build up the plastic layer by layer. I talk more about this later in the video in the infill section. Finally, you can even use cardboard or a pencil to support your creation of 3D structures. This is essentially using bridging to make what you want. This next one is probably one of the hardest things to get used to when using a 3D pen. Heck, I still make this mistake to this day. What is it? It's pushing out too much filament when trying to pen something. This is also called over extruding and it looks like blobs within or at the start and ends of what you're penning. Why is this so difficult? Well, think about what you have to control and pay attention to as you use a 3D pen. You have to press and release the extrude button at the right times. You have to move your hand in the right path, starting and stopping at the correct positions. In addition, you have to move your hand at the correct speed. And often, you have to do most of these things at the same time. A 3D printer automatically controls all these factors I just talked about and has better motors than a tiny 3D pen does. So yeah, no shame in struggling with this one. Let's talk about tips to deal with this. The first tip is to make sure you're using the correct motor speed for what you're trying to accomplish. If you're trying to push out a lot of material for a pretty rough layer or feature, crank that speed up. Or if you're trying to make a small, delicate feature, turn the speed way down. I change speeds all the time when making something. Getting to know your pen and what the different speeds are can help a ton. The next tip is something that is super important to 3D penning, and that is hand speed. If you move your hand too fast or too slow or in too jerky a manner, it can have a huge impact on your extrusion results. Finding the right hand speed and being able to move at that speed consistently can have a great payoff. You can also plan out the path on your model to hide the start and end where over extrusion often shows up. These blobs can also be smoothed away if you have a smoothing tool. The last tip to deal with over extrusion is to know that it's coming. For example, when making this teeny tiny raft, I knew that the start and end of each line would suffer from over extrusion. So I penned out extra of each line and then trimmed off the endpoints with my flush cutters. Voila, a great looking miniature raft with no blobs at the ends. Probably the most common mistake that I see people asking about is having filament stick either too much or too little. In terms of sticking too much, my main tip for this is to tape wax paper over the stencil that you're using. The wax paper holds the filament in place really well, and then once it's cooled, allows it to peel off smoothly without bringing parts of the paper with it. 
Here's a direct comparison of the two methods, and you can see the difference is night and day. Another tip for adhesion issues is that having the temperature too high can lead to the filament sticking more than it needs to. You can see how important it is to find the right temperature for a specific filament. And remember that each brand and type of filament is different. Not all PLA will use the exact same temperature. So don't be afraid to adjust up and down by a few degrees. For not sticking enough, it usually means that you're trying to pan onto something that is really smooth. Filament sticks best to surfaces that are not smooth. In fact, the rougher the surface, the better. If you do need to pen on something that is super smooth, like clay, porcelain, or glass, try using hairspray or penning on blue painter's tape. Both of these things help filament stick by making the surface rougher. Another reason for not sticking is our old friend speed control. If you're moving your hand too quickly, it can make the filament less likely to stick. Try slowing your hand speed down. The next mistake is more of an assumption I see a lot of people make. They assume everything in the model has to be done with a 3D pen. I've even seen people calling others out for mixing methods. I really disagree with this, and in the end, I feel like people should use whatever they want to to make something they're happy with. Let's take a look at some examples. Lots of models involve adding small, intricate details to a face. Many times I use a pencil to sketch out the detail and get it just right. Pencils also allow you to erase if you make a mistake. Then I'll use fine tip permanent markers, which come in a variety of colors, to complete the details. I feel like the end product is way better than if I would try to add them using a 3D pen. Some other examples are using paint or fabric or any number of other supplements you can find at a craft store to your model. I would really urge you to explore and find what works best for you for the creation you're trying to make. That's a lot of what I do on my channel. Experiment and try to show you some of the methods that work best for me, hoping to save you some time and effort. This leads me to the final common mistake I see people making. They make the insides of the creations completely out of filament. In 3D printing, the insides of a printed object is called the infill. The insides of the object are not made solid because it would take way more time to make and it would use up a lot more filament, which would end up costing additional money. The same applies to 3D penning. Instead of wasting time and money filling the insides of large objects with plastic, let's use some of these different infill methods I'm about to show you. My favorite type of infill at this point is using some type of foil. The reason I like this is that it's very easy to mold into complex shapes. You can also use regular paper as infill, but it doesn't hold its shape nearly as well, which can be annoying to work with. For both of these, you'll need to cover the final shape with blue painter's tape to pen over in order to start the foundation for a nice surface. If you need a more regular surface like a sphere or a cube, you can pen over styrofoam objects. A bunch of different styrofoam shapes are available at your local craft store, so go check those out for more ideas of what you can buy. And once again, I cover these with blue painter's tape so the filament sticks well to it. Finally, get creative with the different shapes you can use. You can use pretty much anything that painter's tape will stick to. Here I use some PVC pipe to make a nice looking cylindrical object. So what's the answer to the question in the video thumbnail? In my opinion, it's that trying to 3D pen up into the air is a waste of time. Focusing on learning other, better techniques is the way to go. I hope these tips will save you from making the most common mistakes I see being made by 3D pen users. And if you've already made most of these mistakes like I have, hopefully you found some good ideas on how to prevent them in the future. Do you have another common 3D pen problem or mistake you want to see me do a video on? Leave me a comment down below and I'll see what I can do. If you're interested in learning more on how to use a 3D pen, check out this tutorial's playlist, which covers all skill levels. Finally, don't forget to subscribe if you want more 3D pen content. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.